So, my name is Jamie Wren. I work on the Dart project, specifically on the Dart editor. Um, and so Dart is a new language. It was released a year ago at this conference. Um, very cool language. I'm not going to be talking about the language too much, although we'll actually see some code. Uh, most of this talk is going to be a, uh, a, uh, a demo. We'll actually go in and actually look at the tool. Um, so the, the project that I work on is the Dart editor. Um, and it was a pretty cool opportunity to work on a new uh, tooling, new source code editor for a new language. Um, it lets you start from scratch and say, okay, what do we, you know, what do developers need um, for a language, um, for a new language, right, uh, specifically, because everybody coming to the language is going to be um, new. Um, and so it's pretty unique, and I'm going to just show, we'll kind of walk through some of the, some of the things that we've uh, had to emphasize and, and do in the language. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so the first thing, since everybody's new to Dart, is to make sure that it's easy for new people, right? So make sure that it's very quick to get bootstrapped and actually see a Dart application um, running in Dartium. And I'll show you what Dartium is um, here shortly. Um, to understand the different integration points between the different pieces of Dart and the different tools. Um, and since it is a new tool itself, an easy way to send feedback. Um, that turned out to be uh, one of the best features that we put into our, uh, our tool. Um, and hopefully, after a few hours or days, um, users are going to demand other things. And they're going to demand things like you know, code completion and search and errors and warnings and quick fixes and things that they're already familiar with. Being that they're going to be developing in such a new language, it's going to be you know, important that they've got kind of tooling that they're used to um, and kind of look familiar. Um, and so let's see, in the slides, I have a few screenshots, but we're just going to go straight to a, uh, a demo and show, show all this. So um, demo. So this is the Dart editor. And um, if you're familiar at all with Eclipse, um, you probably have recognized that this is an RCP. Um, it's a set of plugins that we've written. We actually do have a plugin story, but it's not what we emphasize. We emphasize the Dart editor, the, uh, the RCP. And if you're curious about why we made that decision, uh, feel free to come find me. I'll be around. Um, so right off the bat, like I said, send feedback um, right there. So we can send feedback. We can you know, append logs um, with extra information. And um, anything that goes in here goes to the entire Dart editor's inbox. So it's a very quick way to um, iterate on the tool, um, especially for new users. Um, we also um, have the preferences right on the top toolbar. Um, and, if you can, and if you see up in the top right-hand corner, there's a little um, icon saying that there's actually a new version to be downloaded. Um, and that's right here. So download updates automatically. Um, and this, just like in Chrome, how you can say, OK, I would like to update now. And it uh, shuts down the application and then reboots it. Similar kind of experience. Um, very kind of streamlined, especially compared to um, Eclipse, if you're familiar with Eclipse. Um, and then one of the other things that we wanted uh, unlike Eclipse and unlike other tools, is really um, we had the goal at the very beginning and stayed that way for a while, is no preferences whatsoever. There should be um, very few preferences simply because uh, to, to, to minimize the surface area of the UI um, and to um, really get the user experience right. And if you have too many preferences, especially at the beginning, um, then you can't, um, can't uh, do that as easily. So. Um, one of the first things I mentioned was it should be easy to get uh, bootstrapped with simple, um, some Dart code. And so with two clicks, we can do that. And so this is what you see when you launch the Dart editor. And if I click on the clock sample, it loads in the clock sample, puts it over here, and shows me the uh, Dart class. So, sorry, the, uh, the Dart file. And with another click, um, I can launch it. And it launches Dartium. Uh, Dartium is what we call Chromium with the Dart VM built into it. Um, and it is running. And it shows me the frames per second down here. And uh, it happened quickly. Uh, so let me go ahead and just close this down. Let's say that we want another sample to go start exploring. Um, let's go. I, I particularly like this one. It's the solar. And we can launch it. And again, the Dart VM starts up quickly. Dartium, uh, Chromium starts up quickly. And the user is running Dart code, um, two clicks. Turned out to be pretty important, um, especially for trying to get to learn uh, Dart code quickly. That was, that was a, a hard requirement. Um, so 
That's Dartium. That's the Dart VM. You can run your Dart code um, in the browser, in the VM. Uh, but one of the cool features of Dart is that we have the Dart to JS compiler. So it uh, compiles Dart code down to jo JavaScript for you, and you can do all of this on the command line. You can also do it inside of the editor. Um, so from the solar, uh, sorry, let's, let's jump to clock. So you can simply go to tools, um, generate JavaScript, and it'll go through and generate JavaScript. But uh, if we want an even easier experience, and this is a little bit more complicated, uh, but still uh, relatively simple, is let's say that we want a new JavaScript launch, um, JavaScript uh, clock, and we're going to Let's say we want Firefox launching our um, JavaScript generated version of this application. So when you hit run, it launches Dart to JS in the background thread. It's going to print out uh, the output, and it puts the genera generated JavaScript right next to our Dart file, and then it's going to fire up um, Firefox, and here we go. Um, so as simple as that. So you've got the Dart editor, you have Dart going on, Dart to JS call. Um, all kind of seamlessly integrated. So I'm going to uh, quit Firefox here. Now those are all samples. Uh, it's also important to have a, you know, some new content generated, be relatively simple. Um, so a few clicks, we can do that. So hello, uh, go to. Generates new content. And we're up and running. And this is the Hello World uh, sample. And um, users are now developing Dart code. Um, so there you have it. Um, so that's the uh, how to get bootstrapped inside of the Dart editor for the first time. So now I want to show some of the actual, um, some more advanced features. So as you move on, uh, so search. So search experience inside of other um, editors, whatnot can be uh, cumbersome with lots of uh, dialogues. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with the uh, Eclipse uh, dialogues. Uh, you can specify, you know, I would like to search for a particular field named this with this particular scope. Um, very powerful. Uh, we took a slightly different approach, which was to have just a search box at the top to say, okay, um, I'm searching for something, and uh, I'm just going to start typing it in. And so from here, we can say, okay, well, this is using the information we know about the language and all the analysis we've run over the code, this is going to be a particular you know, class or, or um, they may want to search for the text inside of all of the files they have open. Um, in this case, I start to type in planetary body and a class pops up and that's actually what I'm searching for. So let's go to that. Um, so these are, each of these uh, objects are the things whizzing around the sun or around the, the planets. Um, and so inside of the Dart editor, not only do we have you know, different uh, commands for quickly editing code, uh, cut, copy, paste, all the kinds of standard things, we also have run uh, a lot of analysis over to do things like uh, the searching, um, to do things like call hierarchy. So let's say, okay, let me find, I'm trying to figure out this code, let me find, figure out who calls this class, who constructs this class, uh, to figure out where those planets are all coming from. And here's a method called start. Uh, and it's called 11 times from inside this, and if we you know, zoom, zoom through here, we can see you know, we've got our deferred planets. So one of the unique things about the Dart language is that it's optionally typed. So in this particular code, I can specify that Jupiter is going to be a planetary body. I can also specify that um, it's just a variable. Uh, in runtime, we ignore types, it runs faster. Um, again, I'm not going to get into the language too much. But inside of the tool here, what we can do is we can infer the type if we don't know it. So in this case, uh, Jupiter has been declared as a variable. But when we come down here, we can say, OK, Jupiter. And I'm going to show us a little bit of code completion. Jupiter um, dot add. Uh, now, a new planetary body, body around uh, Jupiter. Uh, now, in the source code, it's declared as a variable, but we've actually done some type inference here. Uh, so some pretty uh, interesting, a little bit more powerful uh, 
tooling um, inside of the editor. So here we can say new planetary body, new planetary body, and we'll get um, standard, uh, nice, simple uh, things that developers are kind of used to, uh, code completion. So now we can go through, fill in our, very, our, our, our uh, arguments, and, and we're good to go. Uh, so one of the cool benefits of programming in Dart, it is a web language, um, is the quick turnaround. And when JavaScript or any web developer uh, is working on the web, one of the coolest features is that you can say, okay, reload the page. I just made a text change. You know, reload the page again. I just made another text change. And so I want to show that off a little bit. So I said earlier that the VM is pretty fast. Um, and so we actually have this uh, story in here. So let's say, so let, let's run the solar example again. And I'm going to leave Dartium up right behind me. Uh, so I'm at around 46, 47 frames per second. Let me do a little bit of testing, stress testing perhaps, on my application. Uh, let's say that I want to see how it performs with a few more asteroids in the asteroid belt. So I'm going to save. I'm going to come over here and hit reload. And now we're down to about 13 frames per second. And you can see all the extra asteroids around. So the quick turnaround of being able to say, OK, modify a piece of code, uh, refresh my browser. Um, is something that developers don't lose, um, even though they're working in a uh, more strongly typed language than, uh, than other languages on the web. Um, and so again, I mean, we can, we can do it again. So we can say, OK, what if we just have one asteroid in the asteroid belt, uh, refresh, and, and no surprise, we're running at higher frames per second. So the, the quick turnaround uh, is something I want to show off. And finally, since it is a VM, and we are you know, calling out to it, we uh, have a debugger. So I'm going to show off uh, debugging support, and then I'm going to be out of time. So here is clock. We go ahead and launch it. And it's generating the JavaScript for me. Let's go ahead and make sure that we launch the correct clock. And there's a loop going through in my uh, clock sample that's making sure everything's drawn. Um, and every second it's called. So if I set a breakpoint, a debugger is going to pop up saying, you just hit a breakpoint. And from here, I can explore all the top level um, objects, fields, everything in the current object, and then local variables. Um, things like hover are also supported. And with that, my 15 minutes is about up. <laughs>